What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we got a couple things going on. We're doing a little bit of a tackle breakdown of how we've been catching bluefin. And then also we headed out for a little after work trip. We got off work I think at 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock. Then we had about an hour tow down. Had to half moon. Yep. And then we, I think we hit the water around 5. So we had maybe an hour, hour and a half to troll. Ended up finding some fish which was pretty cool. So we're going to roll that here in a minute. Dropping this thing back about 650 feet. Hopefully, we can get on one of these big blues. And we just got off work. We had nothing better to do, so we're out doing it. Oh, yeah. Hook down, hook down, hook down. Hi, babe. Okay, guys, so it's a little scary. We got that other rod tangled in this rod with this fish. Dustin's on him right now. We're staying tight. We're going to catch this one. Get closer. That evening bite. After work, baby. After work thunder. There we go. Oh. It counts. It's a fish. Oh. Not the giants we're looking for, but. For an after work big fish, that's not a bad fish at all. I'll catch that any day of the week. Before we get into the tackle breakdown, just wanted to say a quick thank you to all the subscribers out there. We just hit 11,000 subscribers. It means the world to Devin and I. We're honestly so motivated by seeing you guys' comments when you guys see us at the boat ramp, come talk to us. It's so cool. We want to keep growing this channel. We want to give back to you guys and all the support you guys give us. So what we want to do is take three of you guys out fishing with us and what you need to do to be entered in that is we need you to go follow our Instagram page and then on our YouTube video here, you need to come at the word done and that's gonna put you in a randomized contest. We're gonna take three of you guys out fishing with us. One last quick thing before we get into the video is that last year we won an award. It was the Die Hard Fishing Award for the best fishing video of the year and uh, Die Hard posted a poll on his Instagram page in December last year. You guys vote on it. We won that award. We just wanted to share that with you guys and say thank you so much because we never would have thought that would have happened, especially since our channel was so new. We just started in July last year and we won that award. So thank you guys so much for voting on that, giving us the support. It gives us the motivation to keep making these videos. We're gonna keep trying to make the quality and make great videos for you guys. Stay tuned. We're gonna get into a bluefin breakdown right now. Okay, so we want to talk to you guys a little bit about how we've been catching these fish and what gear we've been using to catch these fish. First, we want to start off with the rod and reel. The reel we've been using is a Kuma SLX 50 wide. This is actually only a single speed reel. We haven't really found a need to use two speeds yet. You know, so typically we're just cranking in on these fish and then as soon as we, you know, they start doing their pinwheel, we pick the rod out of the holder. Dustin's typically on the railing, I'll grab the gaff. And once that fish comes up, we'll stick them. And then you want a strong rod when you're on that rail. So we're using a pen carnage. Last year, we ran the Akuma PCHs. We weren't the biggest fan because on the rail, the back of the rods would totally get creased. And after a year, you know, they just weren't as nice as we'd like them. So we switched it up a little bit. So this is a hundred and, now this is an 80 to a 150 class rod. 
It's a super nice rod. I think they run about $300, $320. Yeah. It's a great rod. And then the line we're using, we use a 130 pound suffix 832. And then on the leader material, you know, you can run mono, you can run fluoro. Caught them on both. We've caught them on both. We've caught them on different leader lengths. Typically, we want to run like a 50 to 100 foot leader. Right now, we have 130 pound fluoro on. I believe it's from Seaguar. And it's worked pretty good for us. Uh, but it's really what you prefer and how much you want to spend to go chase these fish because the fluoro is super expensive. Some of the guys in uh, Southern California, they're trolling 200 pound. Um, mono with maybe 25 to 50 foot a liter so everybody does it different um i really think that your you know the speed that you have and the color lure that you use and you know what your conditions are on the water are probably much more important than the exact leader line that you're using um going back to the rods last year um one of our previous videos we caught them on that akuma rod and that was a 60 to 130 or 120 120 yeah, 120 yeah i think so a little bit smaller rod so we beef we beefed up the rod because we try to get the fish in the boat as fast as we possibly can. We don't spend a lot of time really trying to fight the fish and you know have it be an hour or two hour fight. We're trying to get them in in 15, you know, 25 minutes maximum because the faster you get that fish in the boat, that means you landed the fish and you're not losing that fish due to it pinwheeling or whatever you got going on. So then on our Mad Max, we switch that back hook out. We switch it to a treble hook. I believe this is an ST66 5 aught. And it's just so, you know, you don't, if a fish bites this thing with this giant treble hook, it's getting stuck in the face. It's going down its throat. These treble hooks are super strong. A lot of people in SoCal, they'll switch both hooks. We've really only have seen people do one in this area, so that's what we've been running. It's been working really good. We haven't lost a fish yet, knock on wood. So we've been super happy with how everything's been performing. We've been doing pretty good this year. I think we have nine fish in the boat. Yeah, on three trips. On three trips? Yeah. So it's been working for us. Another thing too is these things, they're gonna get pretty beat up after you catch a couple of fish. You can see that the paint's coming off. I don't really know, um, you know, how critical the color is when they get beat up like this, but I would say what's more important to that is make sure um, right here where the hook attach or the split ring attachment is to your bait, make sure that's nice and straight because we've landed fish. And uh, you know, when we went to set the lure back in the water, it didn't swim right and it's because this little piece where that split ring attached got bent over and then check this one on the top too and then check your one on the front of the lure that's super important because you want to make sure this thing's tracking true because you're trolling you know pretty quickly anywhere 10 15 18 miles an hour and if it's not um, trolling right it's never going to be going you know the way it should through the water and a lot of people were curious about like what speed we troll in the comments it's that's a, like a very tricky question because we've caught them from nine miles an hour all the way to 18 miles an hour pulling through a boil so it's really just what those fish are willing to bite that day and it's sometimes most of the time i'm driving because devin's staying closer to the rod in case a fish get uh, in case a fish bites and he'll be yelling at me to slow down and i'll be speeding up trying to pull through the school and we've got bit at all different speeds so we don't really know the the exact speed but the one thing i can say for sure is we do try to back it down if we're coming through the bowl we're not trying to be at 18 we have caught them at 18 um, probably close to that 10 mile an hour range for sure definitely and then on our setbacks we typically run three rods we've tried to run four it kind of gets hectic especially when there's only two of us fishing or three of us fishing just because you know you got to burn those reels in and a lot of the guys in the comments are wondering why do we set our rods back so far so we try them at you know various lengths every time we go out, trying to see if we can you know move it closer. So I think last time we went out, we trolled three rods, with the furthest one being what was it, 550 feet, and it didn't seem to work work for us. So we dropped that one back all the way back to 1,400 feet, and not even two hours later we got slammed. I'm not saying that's you know where you have to be. It's just is looking like what it looks like a lot of the guys up here in northern california they're trolling a farther setback and i don't know if it's because the fish up here are more boat shy that the water's a little bit colder up here than it is in san diego um you know in southern california that water gets in that 70 degree range where up here the warmest water we're seeing is you know 62 63 maximum um 
So we've had better luck trolling a little bit farther behind the boat, and that's why we have this big rod, that's why we have this big reel, because it is so far behind the boat. We don't want to have a little rod where we're putting a fighting belt on that you're really having to fight the fish when it's that far away. We're trying to get it in as fast as possible. And then we cycle through guys too when we finally hook up. Like at 1,400 feet, we're trying to get this fish in in under 20 minutes. So you're, there's no way you're doing that by yourself. You got the drag locked, you're just cranking on this fish. So we have to cycle through guys to get this fish in as quick as possible. It, it makes it so their meat doesn't get too, too hot, and then you kill them and put them on ice, and I promise you, you're, the meat, the taste, the texture is 10 times better. You want to treat this fish good because it is a really nice quality fish. So you want to get them on the boat, you want to spike them, you want to put them on ice, and then later in the day, you know, you can take your pictures, you can do whatever you want, you just want to make sure you cool them down super quick and dispatch the fish. Yeah, the fish have um, lactic acid that builds up in their muscles when you fight them. So the longer that you fight them, the more lactic acid that builds up, the quality of that fish is going to go down. So we're trying to land it as fast as possible. And another thing, a lot of people in the comments want, want to say, or on even on all these threads and all these bluefin pages, they want to say you need the best reel, you need the best rod, you need a seeker, you need a big pen international. We, we've hooked a couple 180 pound fish and this Akuma SLX has done the job just fine. It's We've had no problems. The drag's phenomenal. For under $300, you can't beat it. I would put it up almost against any reel on the market. So don't listen to everything you hear, but... Not everyone's got the budget for that big pen. I mean, this I think it's 280 is what that reel costs. And, I mean, would it be nice to have a pen international? Sure, it'd also be nice to have a 30-foot Parker. But, you know, we're, it works. So if you guys are going on the water, don't be scared. Be like, oh, I got to have a pen international, otherwise I can't fish. We've caught countless fish on this reel, haven't had any problems yet. If we do have problems, we'll tell you guys, but we haven't had any problems with these guys yet. And the cool thing we added to our spread, we don't have it out, it's still in the room. We have a big pen sender. I believe it's a 9-0, nine, yeah. I believe it is. And we really want to catch a fish on it, just to just to show everyone it can be done. We're gonna try and do it in our next video. We're gonna set it on our far our far rod, way behind the boat. It's on a roller rod, a shorter rod, so we're probably fighting the fighting belt in that one too. But we're just gonna see if we can catch one, just to prove everyone wrong that you don't have to have the most high end quality. I think that reel is only 180 bucks, but maybe we're gonna get schooled out there. We'll see. But I, I don't think so. I think it's gonna be not a problem. It'll be fun. So when we're trolling. We start the reel right there on strike. And then Dustin will be trolling and then we'll get bit. And then me and Dustin like to communicate right when we get bit. So he'll be screaming out the back. Yeah, you guys will hear in the videos that I'm saying slow down, slow down, slow down. Or I'm telling him that I'm slowing down. Because as I'm slowing down on that throttle, he's increasing the drag, almost like a clutch in a car. So I'm I'm on the throttle, he's on the brake there, trying to get that thing to go. So once once he starts slowing down, you know, you click this button in here and I'll just work it up nice and slow, nice and slow, and then once we pretty much get down to, you know, troll speed or idle, idle, speed, idle yeah. speed, yeah, I'll crank it all the way into full, and then you'll start to see that, you know, that that fish slow down. And then once he finally stops, then I'll start, you know, working on him, and I'll work on him for a couple minutes, and then working on these, you know, 50 class reels with the big fish on the end is a pain. It really is a pain. So that's another reason why you cycle through is because it really is a workout. Oh yeah, you get burned out. When you're, we're, I mean, we're cranking as hard as you possibly can on that fish. It's not sitting there, you know, pulling on the rod and, you know, crank, reeling down to it. We're cranking as hard as we can to get as much line as that reel as fast as possible. And a lot of the times the reel won't even let you reel on the fish when the fish is really pulling against you. Yeah. So a lot of the times we'll grab the line with our, you know, our other hand and we'll actually pull it into the reel and crank with our other hand to just inch on this fish. That's a really good point for you guys too, because um, we've seen some videos and not trying to criticize some of the guys, but I can't tell you how tight the line is in the reel that entire time when he was talking about when we're cranking and sometimes you're not gaining any line like we this line is so incredibly tight the first fish that we caught i couldn't believe how tight that line is but you know you're using you know 100 150 pound line you're not you're not going to break off you shouldn't break off unless there's a chafe in your line you want to put the wood to this fish and get it in the boat absolutely so one of the last things we were going to tell you guys is we're fighting that fish and the back rod holder and we're cycling through guys, cranking on it, cranking on it, get that fish in as quick as we can. And as soon as we get to leader or close to leader, when that fish gets underneath the boat, it's gonna start pinwheeling. They do pinwheels in different directions. It's never the same. 
Sometimes they'll pinwheel where they'll come way under the boat and they'll go way out shallow. And then sometimes they'll just do more of a tight pinwheel where they stay deep the whole time. Regardless of when that fish is pinwheeling or how it's pinwheeling, we're making sure that rod is out of that rod holder and it's on the rail. That's what these rods are designed for. It is a rail rod. That's why it has, so the grip comes all the way up to the first guide. Oops, stuck here. Yeah, that's why this grip comes all the way up here. This thing is stout, it's designed so you can set this on a rail or a gunnel and you can really put the wood to that fish and get them in quick. So when it's on that rail, there's various different ways you can get that fish in. You can just have it tight and just kind of keep trying to gain on them. For me, I try to pull down on that fish and reel into him, pull down, and it's a game of inches. You're not gaining a lot of a lot of line at that point. If you had a two speed, maybe you could gain a little bit more, but this has worked out for us just fine. When they're going on that wide swing, you definitely want to have a long gaff. I don't know if we have one here, actually. Yeah, so we have these long gaffs. Last year, you know, you, I ordered some hooks off a of militant tackle. Order, I believe they're four inch or they're the three inch mustad gaff hooks. And I just bought these hardwood dowel rods from like Home Depot. So I think this gaff at the end of the day costed around fifty dollars, maybe forty dollars. Probably hard for you guys to see, but they're they're pretty long. They're how long is this one? This one's eight feet, and this one's six, I think six and an eight and then I just got some paracord and I wrapped it you can look it up on via YouTube I learned this method from real ventures Hawaii I believe his name is from Hawaii awesome channel dude catches a bunch of fish but then we just got some epoxy ran some epoxy over it made sure you tied that gaff hook pretty good and these gaffs have been truly amazing for us and they're only you know 40 50 bucks a pop they definitely helped us land some fish for sure because some of the fish they'd swing real wide and um you know whoever's on the gaff they're able to reach out there pretty far outside the boat stick them you know the best spot and that's another thing too you want to try to gaff the fish in the head as much as you can but i mean if you're sticking them you're sticking them if you get them in the tail you get them in the loin oh well at least you land it's better to land the fish than lose the fish so absolutely well we hope that this helped you guys out we hope that you guys take this information and use it and catch some fish if you do catch some fish using this information let us know in the comments below if you guys have other questions make sure you guys you know shoot us a, a dm on instagram or comment in the comments below if you got questions i think we covered most of the things of how we've been catching the fish up here we'll see you on the next one